Hi everyone. So we will get started. I think people will come gradually. Uh, so, so today we are very happy to have Justin here. So Justin is from Georgia Tech. It's now a PhD, uh, fourth year PhD candidate. I think no, fifth year. fifth year already. So fifth year candidate. His advisor is uh, David Patik, and he's very famous for his kind of. Uh, work on VQA is kind of the initial kind of uh, effort, kind of initial con contributors and the authors for the VQA task. And then he has done a lot of interesting works in vision and language intelligence, focus on both the vision and the language side. So today we are very happy to kind of hear about what's going on recently in Justin's, talk, uh, in Justin's research. So let's welcome Justin. Thank you, and thank you, Peng Chen, for introduction. And it is really a great pleasure to talk here. So a lot of work I've been doing in the last few years involves the question how to understand and generate like a grounded language. So to get a sense what I mean by there, let's consider this image. If you ask to describe this image, it may something like a kitchen, a clean kitchen with a double sink, a black kettle on stove, and refrigerator. We are reading this sentence you may ground it the words in, the, in this sentence to a specific region in the image. And if you want to know more about this image, you can ask the question, something like, is there anything in the sink? And if you focus on this region, you can get the answer, it is a wash clothes. And you may want to know more about the color of the wash clothes, and the answer is blue. And is actually happening a dialogue here. So, and we can actually get in some information by this kind of interaction or communication. And the general research problem we are interested in is how can we develop an agent to do this kind of grounded, like grounded communication and interaction about the visual environment. So a common approach is to collecting a data set for each task. For example, we can collect COCO, VQA, uh, dialogue data set and we can train our agent to do this kind of data set. Well, if you decorate your kitchen a little bit more, so our agent may face a much more great challenge. For example, it may, it may never saw an elephant is standing on the shelf. So it may recognize this is a cup, but what does a sago mean here? So those, actually those stickers making the, this less look like a refrigerator. So this scenario is a specific instance, like, some, uh, like what we call is an open world grounding problem. So uh, namely, it is impossible to collect a training set that contain all the concepts we encounter every day. And the question I'm going to answer in this talk is how to leverage grounding learned from other sources to improve the multimodal AI capability. So I'm going to talk, describe two projects which are trying to solve this in two different perspectives. And there are a lot of interesting applications related to vision language. So for example, uh, like, visual, like developing a visual, uh, like virtual assistant, uh, helping visual impaired, and machine teaching, and experimental AI. So there are some other previous work I'm interested in, in general. So something like VQA, image captioning, and the visual dialogue, and image video understanding, and embody agent. So that's basically cover all my previous research during my PhD. OK, so let's start it. Uh, so my talk will consist of these two projects. The first one is New Baby Talk. Uh, it's published on CPR 2008, and it's mainly for generation. And the second one is View Bird, a pre training task agnostic view linguistic feature for vision representation tasks. So it's on this year uh, NIP, and uh, then it's going to mainly about understanding. So image captioning. Uh, probably something like people in this room may like know, already know a lot. So to me, this is kind of a fundamental capability of our agent to describe what is being seen here. So for example, uh, given of the input, the desire, oh, the, desire, the desire output is to describe this image. For example, in the left image, uh, it is a table has a mug uh, and a plate with food on it, and on, on the right is a do dog wearing a goggles and leather sitting on a motorcycle. So existing state-of-art image captioning system mainly consists of these two components, a convolutional network which extracts the visual features 
and a recurring unit network which generates captions. So let's look at a bottom-up and top-down tension for image captioning, which is actually developed by Peter like during intern in MSR. And it consists it using a detector, a uh, pre-trained visual genome to detect to represent the different features. And it has this kind of two-layer LSTM with attention uh, to generate captions. And let's look at some result. For example, given the first image, it can generate something like uh, two elephant and a baby elephant is walking together. Uh, it's actually pretty great. And it can generate something like a cat is standing on a sign that says something, and a man standing on a beach holding a surfboard. And notice that it is actually not perfect. So we don't want to say some, um, some untoken, like this is actually not informative, and this actually is beyond the capability of the caption, caption system. And also, there may be something, something like a bias here, so it's actually a clock, not a surfboard. So if we check the output of the object detection and OCR system, so we can see that it can actually de correctly detect those like uh, the signs, the signs, the content of the sign, and also this is a clock here. So an ideal image caption system should directly borrow this, those concepts detected by other systems. And ideally, we want to correct it, this untoken to, to, like, to, the, to the actual content and, the, and replace the surfboard to the clock. Cool. And let's take a step back by looking at some image capturing system before the deep learning revolution. So BabyTalk, for example, use a deform, like a DPM, which is a very old style detector to detect the object, attribute, and prepositions. And then it use a, like a CRF network. Basically it's to joint refine or joint predict the labeling. And then it will go into fill those kind of detected concept into this human generated template. So for example, like, uh, this will be generated caption, like this is a photograph of one dog and one cake. So every sentence will look similar. And if we compare these two different systems, we find that the baby talk approach is more grounded because uh, it, it ties a caption with the detected output. Well, the state-of-art neural-based image caption system is more natural because it can generate potentially uh, like, uh, many captions. And the ideal system is something in the middle. So we want it can associate the name concept to the pixel and bounding box detection in the image. And we also want human generate, uh, we also want no human generated template. We want language needs to be natural. And this is exactly what we are designing for, for this image captioning system. Okay, let's look at uh, the model in more detail. So given an image, we, uh, it can use arbitrary proposals from any object detectors and to extract some features, uh, like region features. So by introducing a novel kind of pointer-based uh, like recurrent unit network, our model can generate this kind of like static caption templation, like something like a yellow box, a yellow region with a gray region is sitting at blue region with a green region. And then we are going to fill those slots by using the concept found by the detectors. And the final caption is the composition of these two. So basically, the final caption now can be a puppy with a ties is sitting at a table with a cake. OK, the first question is how to construct the caption template. And given this image, a young woman standing next to a man holding a surfboard, we can use some kind of uh, auxiliary uh, annotation, such as detection. So we, can, we have this kind of annotation, like the person, there is a person, there's two person here, and there's two surfboard here. So we can find, we can matching these person labels with the uh, words in the caption by, by kind of string match. And then like we can find like uh, the associate person labels to each words in the caption. And if we remove those nouns, so actually there's a template here. And if we are able to remove more, something like attribute and actions, so we can get a more abstract template. Mm -hmm. This process is an offline process. Uh, you need to train them in order to identify our templates. Uh, yeah, it, it, you can think it's offline process, but in, in, in actual, like we are uh, producing it like online during the training. So we are considering a lot of different, yeah. yeah like but, but not in the testing time. The runtime. Yeah, this is, this is offline, yes. Yeah. And inference time is actually a little bit different. Yeah. So the way you generate this, so you have a vocabulary of attributes and mm -hmm. uh, uh, words oh. that you just check, or you have a 
name entity recognition to see if it's a person, if it's a... Yeah, yeah. So, so in, in, in this paper, we actually don't have this attribute stuff. We only focus on the nouns. But basically, we, given a person, we have a dictionary. So basically, uh, like we will, I will introduce in later part. But basically, we have a dictionary and map, mapping the words to getting the correspondence. So in terms of the, you, you need to render image capturing engine on uh, each image, right? <coughs> this engine is based on, on Peter's work. Uh, no, no. This is like given a ground truth caption. Oh, that's a ground truth. Yeah, that's ground truth caption. Yeah. Okay. Um, this what you want to do is kind of a online in the training stage. I think this yeah. is, can be kind of a pre person Yeah, I'll, I'll introduce in the later slides. Yeah. So, yeah, so there are some problems we are facing. So, yeah, yeah, just uh, in the later slides. Okay, so let's look at some model details here. So, basically, we are using a point network uh, with a Visual Sentinel to generate the captions template. So, we may focus, this is actually the region features. And this is a Sentinel vector, which basically represents what is the model already know uh, about the caption. And given the word A here, we want to generate the next word Yang. So basically, the, the, this will refer to the Sentinel vector. And given the next word, we want to, ref, we want to generate these regions. So it will actually referring to the actual region it's pointing to. Yeah, and actually, this is the answer for the question. Like, because uh, we may, because like different, uh, for different image, may, we may have different uh, the object detection system may be not perfect. So for example, given look at this image, uh, like a man is playing a guitar on stage, because of this bad illumination, right, uh, the detector output is actually something like umbrella, shirt, and card, right? So we don't want to use any of this output for our caption system. So our solution is to treat these object labels as caption template. So, so basically, so if we can treat uh, the template as a man is playing a guitar on stage, the system fall back to a normal image caption system, right? So there's actually no visual grounding here. How we do this is we dynamically identify the visual world during training. So basically, we are having these rules. So like, like basically, the, the intersection over union of the detected bounding box and, G and ground truth bounding box is large 0.5, and the detect labels is match the words. Then we are treating it as a slot, our visual world here. So because we having involved this detected bounding box, the model can kind of know if this is a bad illumination, the detector's detection system may be bad. So then if you're not using any of the detections uh, output. Cool. And the second stage is filling the slots. So for example, uh, given this template, we already generated a young, like region two, standing next to region three, holding region five. And also with this det detection output, with this kind of concept, cost concept, we first do a uh, like uh, classifies a plurality, and basically given a person, we want to classify this is a single, not plural. And the second is we want to define the fine-grained character here. So given the person class, we want to classify this is a woman. And the final output is a composition of these two. Cool. And let's look at the objective function. So basically, we minimize the cross entropy loss of this big objective function, but it's actually pretty simple. And we minimize the template word probability. And we also, this, this part is minimize the refine, refinement probability. And also this target region probability. So you may notice that we have an average term here. So that is because we have different co-reference uh, when different kind of supervision exists, right? So let's look at this image. And uh, for example, caption is a young woman is sitting inside a boat. So there's only one young woman, but there might, might be multiple boats here. Because Coco don't provide us which boat is the target one, and oh, and we well, and we, we may not don't know uh, like which boat is re referring to. So our solution is to maximize the average target region probabilities here. So and if we're having this supervision, we can simply maximize the correct one. And uh, so let's look at some data sets. So we provide like we train our models on like Flickr ZDK and Coco data set, and like we also build this object category to words. So basically, like for Coco one is something like person is mapping to child, baker, so any concept we can find. And also we have, have the normal caption preprocessing step here. So some result here. So for standard image captioning, uh, like we compare the Flickr 3DK and Coco. So we can see that our model is achieved the state of, state of the art at that, at that, at that time. 
And by comparing the, uh, like pr by providing the ground truth bounding box as the blue one, so we also observe like it's actually improving a little bit. So that means that our model can benefit a more accurate object detector. We also propose these robust image captioning tasks. So the goal here is to evaluate image captioning for novel scene composition, right? For example, in this case, the cat and monitor is something like uh, less, co less, uh, less co-occur in, in the cocoa image. So basically, it's like our split has these kind of properties. The distribution of co-occurring object in train data is different from test data. And then we can have these sufficient examples from each character in train. And we have this normal composition of pairs of characters in test. So this is just a split. Just <coughs> kind of create a split here. And then we can evaluate this uh, new metric called accuracy. So basically, uh, basically like we, we can evaluate whether or not a generic caption includes the new object combinations. So basically, mm -hmm. So the object categories are already there. So it's not new object categories, it's the new combination of the Yes, yes. That's, that's something like a surrogate between the normal object captioning and the normal image captioning. Basically, we want to say, okay, you already know this, but it's less co-occurring. So, and we, we are basically creating this split to make sure that that the, com the composition of this in the test is new, while it's not a co-occurring tree. Yeah. And this is the result for the. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh -huh. What's the size of this training? Training. Training. Size of the training data and testing. It's a new spirit of the. Yeah. yeah, it's just a new split. So basically, there's no data here. We're just um, uh, building the split by kind of this, like using this kind of like objective. And this is just a test data set. So there's no, it's a new split of training test. Yeah, it's, it's a new split. So okay. actually, the, actually, like uh, I think the test data will, will, will consist of the train and test. So, so like basically, it's just a redistribution okay. of the. Of the data. The yeah. Of the other image caption, you should see. Yeah, we, we, see yeah, we should see something. Yeah. So basically, what we see here is so this is like the we run it on attention, attention, up, down, and your baby talk. So what we see here is that usually that uh, compared to the like on the standard standard set standard split, it usually like drop to a three point on, on those metrics, and we also observe that our model actually, especially on those, the accuracy evaluation, our model outperform uh, more, uh, like do a better job on this metric. And we also test on this on normal object captioning, and this is proposed by earlier work. And basically the goal here is to describe the image with normal object. And uh, so by, by what they do is that they exclude all the pairs that contains at least one of the eight objects in Coco. So something like in this image, the bus is never showing the train, and the test split is uh, like the test. The test set is split into in domain and outer domain. So in domain means that okay, so it contains uh, the, so those concepts already seen, and outer domain is, means it's not seen. So they evaluated on uh, I one score here. Basically, it's going to check if the excluded object correctly mentioned in the, in the generic caption, and this is the result. How this data set is different from no caps? Oh yeah, so 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 this this data set is only uh, like uh, basically they are is in a cocoa domain, right? So basically they are going to um, like uh, re-split re the data set, which you don't see the you don't see the bus here, but no cap is actually in a more open domain. So it uses the open image, it, it uses actually more image and with with more characters, yeah. And yeah, this is the performance and. Yeah, and usually, like uh, we are outperform uh, the state of art at the same time. Cool. And in summary, so we propose a two-stage approach for image captioning, and it first generates a hybrid template, and then it fills the slots with caption uh, with characters recognized by object detector. Well, there are also some limitations here. So one limitation is that it only grounded noun words which founded by object detector. So we can extend it to attributes, actions, OCRs, which making the more system more like more powerful. And the second is it's limited by the image caption dataset, right? So we are still training on the Coco dataset. So, like, like, so the solution may be something like we can learn from other data source. And this exactly I'm going to talk on the next project is Wilbert. We are trying to leverage other like other source of data to train this system. Cool. Any questions? Okay, 
And uh, for the Wilbur project, so basically we are trying to explore this kind of general pre-training and fine-tuning uh, procedure on vision language model, on vision language tasks. So we have a very cool system for something like image uh, visual question answering, image captioning, visual competence reasoning, and vision language navigation, right? So a common procedure is to collect a data set and, uh, and design an algorithm here. Whoa. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry. And we, and, and we train our agent on this, on, on this data set. So, and we do this, like we repeat this kind of procedure on every, on every task we are interested, right? So it may some, be some issues here. So, and because this procedure is often resulting in a specialized agent with limit scope of visual grounding performing a natural task. And it is really unclear that an agent working well on VQA can working well on image captioning. So for example, give me this image and is a question, give me the question like what type of plant it is. So the, the agent will ask, uh, the, the, the question, the, the question bot, answer bot will answer banana. Well, the caption bot will generate a caption something like a bunch of red and yellow flowers on the branch. And note that there is an uh, inconsistent here. So, and we do want this concept, visual concept to be consistent. So the goal of our interest is we want to design a common model for visual grounding and leverage them on wide array of vision and language tasks. And so basically we want to pre-train the visual grounding. So note that the pre-train and transfer is something existing in the, both in the like, vision and the natural language community. For example, uh, in vision community, like we have this image data set, uh, image net, and uh, so basically we pre-train this on the classification tasks, and, we, and then we can fine tuning on object detection, semantic segmentation, and post estimation. For, for, for the NLP community, we have this book corpus and Wikipedia, and we can have this bird, like GPT, Elmo, and then we can fine tune it on question answering, competence inferences, and sentiment analysis. So the problem here is what kind of data should we use to learn visual grounding? So in this, in this project, we are using this uh, data set called conceptual, cap uh, conceptual caption data set, and it is actually uh, the image and caption pairs collected from the website. So for example, this image, and so basically it will convert from the annotation from the alt test, which basically is helping the visual impaired. And uh, by some heavy processing, it can generate caption something like a pop artist perform at a festival uh, in, a, in a city. The merit is that it is actually a line image pair caption, uh, it is line image caption pairs, and, uh, and then we can learn visual grounding here. So it is large scale, and approximately like 3.3 million data here, and also it's automatically collected, so we can scale it very easily. The next question is what we want to put on the other side of the box, so basically the model here. So let's look at the bird model first. So basically the bird model taking uh, two sentences as input, and if you're masking the sentence, and uh, trying, to rec trying to predicting this the masking word here, and basically, if you're trying to use the context, context information to predict a sentence. And the simple solution is that, okay, we can replace this sentence A with image, and uh, then like with this kind of pair data, and we can mask in the image, and we can predicting the, we can predicting the, we can predicting the, reconstructing the image, or predicting the words here. Mm -hmm. Image. We will need to image generation, or you just oh yeah. Yourself. So yeah, yeah. You, you can you can actually you can actually predicting something like a uh, like regress uh, features like to L to minimize the, the the distance between the features something like this, or you can uh, are predicting some hybrid labels something like soft labels soft target. Yeah. So in your experiment, do you see any difference? Yeah, yeah. And also we yeah. Actually, I'm going to talk maybe later. Mm -hmm. So so here. When you have two sentences, the way the whole system is built, mm -hmm. it's going to take into account the order of the words. But in image, you don't, the way you're describing the features, there is no order. So yes. are the two parts of the model different? Yes, yes. So for the image part, we actually have this location embedding here. So 
so the location embedding, so basically the word, the word order in the sentence is basically they have this kind of location embedding and uh, depending on the sentence representation. So for the image part, we also have this embedding, specifically for 2D, two dimension. Yeah. Image what's, what's the nature of that embedding? Oh, the nature basically is that we embed the coordinate of the, like basically the bounding box location of the image. As X, Y, or X, Y? X, Y, yeah, X, maybe the, yeah, just the top left and the, and the values and the haze and some, like, I will uh, coverage something. Yeah. But in, in case of language, they don't do that. They don't embed the coordinate. They embed this, these harmonics yes. so that you can yes. actually. Yes. So it's perform. actually different here, yeah. So, so why not do the same? Uh, so, so because image is 2D, right, it's not really clear how to do, yeah, so basically there are, yeah, there are actually many ways to embedding them. So, and I think in our work, we are, didn't really explore this, like which one is the best option, uh, but we simply just think this is the most intuitive way, I think, but this is maybe tried later to see, like, which one is the best. So, I don't have a really good solution, a uh, good answer now. I think in birds, they also do not use those sign calls and embedding it, but they just learn it. Yeah, it's a, it's a supposition. But <laughs> if you're learning the embedding, you're still learning a vector that embeds the coordinate. You're not yeah. storing x, y. Yeah. So it would be high dimensional representation of the, of the position. Yeah. You, you, learn, you, learn, you learn embedding for like first word, second word, basically those index. Mm -hmm. And for image, it's just uh, some kind of embedding for, for maybe it's a, a vector, maybe a, like a location vector. Uh, X Y vector here to convert to a uh, embedding, a high dimension so embedding. Still a continuous vector. Yes, yeah, still a continuous vector. vector. Oh, so it is a vector. Yeah, yeah it is a vector. Same thing. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so the bird architecture basically <coughs> involves this transformer encoder. So basically, it is a multi-head self-attention and to model model to model the contest. And it is a feed-forward layer. It has feed-forward layers to compute nonlinear hierarchy features. And it is, and it has layer form and residuals to making the model can train a very deep. And uh, it also has these position embeddings, and which allows the model to learn relative position. And there might be some problem here. So, so one of the problem we are thinking is there the different modality may require different level of abstraction. So, for example, for the linguistic stream or for the language stream, given the word artist, so we have an embedding layer, or like a linear layer, to projecting them to a dense representation. But for the visual stream, given the image, we actually have this kind of over a hundred layer of convolutional network to represent the features. Okay, so like, sh should we treat these as the same, or should we treat as different? And in this paper, like our solution is to treat them differently. So we, we like propose these two stream models which process, like which process visual and linguistic separately. So basically, like we kind of splitting this the bird model into left and right side. So note that there are actually different parameters involved on different side. And so L bird can have L layers and V bird can have K layers. And, and usually the K is less, smaller than L. They, they don't share any. They don't share the parameter, yeah. Yeah, you don't have a cross yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So this is exactly what I'm going to say nest, nest. So, and then the problem is how to fuse different modality, right? And our solution is use co-attention, uh, which basically is proposed by my earlier work to fuse information between different sources. And uh, so this is exactly a more complete figure here. So basically you, are, you can looking at this, looking at this co-transformer, co so and basically it's going to uh, extract this information from the from the from the language side uh, to the to the vision uh, to the vision side, <coughs> and the co transformer uh, is uh, is something like uh, basically we replicated the single transformer to a multi like uh, to a double one, and the, and the transformer encoder was query from another modality here, and we are going to re aggregate information with residual add operation. So basically, that it's going to uh, like, uh, aggregate information from another, another modality uh, at every 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 like layer. And the Puccini objective, like we are considering these two. So the first one is masking multimodal labeling modeling, and it follows the mask language modeling in BERT. Basically, it's with like a 15 percent of time the word and image regions going to predict, and the linguistic stream involves this like. Uh, Kind of replace mask and replace random word and keep the same. So, when, mm -hmm. so when you say predicting image regions, you mean what yeah. are you predicting? Yeah. So yeah. So in our work, basically, we are predicting the soft labels. So basically, because you have a detection output, right, and you have these uh, soft labels, so are going to minimize the KL KL divergence between these two distributions. 
for the visual stream, like basically we uh, of the eighty percent of the time we replace with a zero vector here. Mm -hmm. So what is the vector? Oh, the vector is actually the oh, representation. Oh, no, it's not labels. It's it's kind of the uh, it's the representation basically people use for uh, I think it's two thousand uh, two thousand forty eight. So it's a representation before the label. There's a linear layer converting them to the labels. So basically, we are trying to mimicking this linear layer. This the whole something or yes, yeah, these features are from like a bottom-up attention. So basically, uh, is 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 it's a detector. It's a detector between on visual genome. So Peter Anderson do like uh, propose this framework to extract features. Extract features on what? Though? So you have image. Yeah. And what? Oh yeah, you have image and you have a detector. And the, and the detector is pre-trained on like a visual genome. So basically, it's a very uh, dense annotated uh, annotated uh, data set. And then you basically you have a detections, and those features are actually those detection output. Basically, the feature of the detection. It's for each each region. Each region, yeah, okay. each region, yeah. It's just yeah. one embedding. Yeah, I, actually, actually, it's something like this. So basically, uh, so basically, given this image, so it will detecting these different patches. And it is use uh, yeah it is use a fast RTN with residual one on one backbone, and it trained on visual genome data set. So it also has like this sixteen hundred uh, like sixteen hundred de detection classes. Uh, so and uh, so basically the representation is for each bounding box. And so in our in, in, like in, like what we do is that we use the sum of the region embedding with location embedding. So location embedding is what I explained before. For the test representations, uh, we are using the same as the bird. So basically, that use this kind of uh, like a thirty thousand word pieces vocabulary on input. It, each token is some of these three embeddings: the uh, the token embedding, segment embedding, and position embedding. Cool. And let's talk about the fine tune. Ah, uh, yeah. So for the segment embedding here, so for image, for this we don't have we only have one segment embedding. But for bird, because it uses the consecutive sentence, right? It's two sentences here. So the first sentence will be one. The second sentence will be two. So basically, it basically indicated which sentence it is. Yeah. But in our case, since we only have one caption, uh, the second embedding only uses one. So there is actually nothing learned here. Keeps the embedding there. Yeah, just keeps embedding for, for for consistency with the uh, bird. And yeah, and basically the fine tuning procedure is we want to pre-train on some, uh, using the objective I'm just describing, and we are fine tuning the four tasks in this paper. So we fine tuning. I have a question. So mm -hmm. during pre-training, so mm -hmm. you just pre-train on Google CC, or you also include all the other downstream tasks? In no, I, yeah, I only I only pre-train on conceptual caption. Just Google. yeah, because we want to like basically separating these two things. Okay. Yeah. And on the fine tuning, we are having this VQA, and basically it's giving an image and trying to ask a question. Uh, ask, a, ask a question, and this VCR uh, basically giving this image and a question. You are going to find the answer and the reason. Uh, so basically, it has a nice property of tying the specific uh, like person with image regions, and we are, and also another one is refer expression. So given the given the like uh, uh, description, you want to find the corresponding regions, and also the caption based image retrieval. So giving a sentence uh, caption, you want to retrieve the correct one from a pool. And this is some result. So we compare with the state of art, uh, like a, a VQA and VCR at that time. So we observe that our model has a little improvement on VQA. Uh, we all have a significant improvement on VCR. And by comparing this single stream uh, with uh, our two stream model, we find there are some improvement over here. And if we compare with without pre-train on conceptual caption or pre-train on conceptual caption, we also find that the final model is actually outperformed like without pre-training. And this is the result for referred COCO and, uh, and the image retrieval. So in, in, in general, like we find uh, really uh, a significant improving over state of our at that time. So retrieval is on COCO or Flickr? Oh, it's Flickr. Yeah, it's Flickr's DK. And we also do this ablation study. So basically, we want to study because we have this ability to vary the vision layers, right? So we want to study okay, what is the most appropriate layer, number of layers we want to uh, for different tasks? So we tried on two layer, four layer, six layer, and eight layer. So we can see there for VQA actually the six layer is better, but for VCR, uh, two layer can 
can already do a pretty good job. So it's actually, so the, the, the difference are small, but actually it, the two layers is actually can be better. And we also uh, do ablations on pre-training. So basically we vary this uh, different pre-training, a uh, number of pre-training sets. Basically we use 25% uh, of the pre-training, 50% of pre-training, and we observe this train set like with more data, with more pre-training data, uh, the downstream performance is better. Yeah, and, and uh, interesting is that uh, actually when we put the papers on archive, there is a whole line of the concurrent work here. So including like uh, including different like uh, different labs and different organizations, and uh, so this is really a hot topic now. So people are kind of uh, have same interest at the same time. Yeah, this is our paper. And in summary, so we propose a, a task agnostic vision uh, We propose a task analysis with linguistic representations for pre-training for visual grounding, and we introduce this pre-train transfer to vision language tasks we achieve state of art on multiple vision language tasks. And, and the limitations is the model can still learn inconsistency grounding by some task-specific fine-tuning, right? So, and then like our solution is trying to train multiple vision language tasks together. So like, it's not like task-specific fine-tuning, but you can fine-tune all of them at once. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you go back again? Sure. So the okay, the insistency is from the task specific fine tuning. Yep. And also, why you call this real grounding? Because I didn't see any kind of grounding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, gr the, ground, the grounding is actually hybrid because because like uh, uh, because of this pre training, right? You are trying to use one modality to infer another modality. Basically, you are trying to con like predict the connectivity be behind this. So we have some visualizations with, which I didn't show here. Basically, we see that by visualizing the attention, and we, we do observe that uh, the word are correct are corresponding to the correct regions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. For, for ground, uh, you motivate your research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By grounding, right? yeah. But for grounding is a it's by itself it's a ill defined task. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I found uh, if you get good results or bad results or bad results. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much it's attributed to the to the grounding is too. Yep. Do you have any, any analysis to show that oh if we fix all the grounding we can improve the performance <coughs> by certain percentage? And yeah. how do we measure grounding? Yeah, yeah. I I think that's a really good question. Uh I think people there might be different tasks to specifically evaluate visual grounding. Something like refer expression, right? Basically you are marrying whether this phrase are referred it correctly, right? But but for this kind of pre-training, we actually didn't have a really good way. So we can only do by like a visualizing, uh, like something like visualizing. Model without the mm -hmm. Couldn't you retrain your model without the cross between modalities? Yes, yeah, then yeah. Test that and show that you're not getting just as good result. And I, mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I think in this case, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good way, but we need to combine these two modality at some point to do this vision language task, right? And second, but we have, we have tried this like without initialization, like without pre-training. Basically, we are using train from scratch on these downstream tasks, and we actually observe a worse performance here. Mm -hmm. so you have the results on the visual, exp the expressions on the field, the referring expressions. Yeah, yeah. That task is specifically designed for the grounding, right? Yes, but but we, we actually don't we, we actually don't have the we actually don't have uh, like a specific way to evaluate whether we uh, on pre training stage whether we learn better grounding or not. But it has a label which phrase refers yeah, to which yeah. part of the but, but, so but, we, this. but we do observe on downstream tasks is actually uh, especially for refer expression it actually having a really huge boosting uh, performance compared to previous work. Do you think it's necessary to define mm -hmm. grounding as a separate task and measure? Uh, I think I think in general I think in general uh, we should do this because uh, because I think this may leading to a more interpretable what is the network doing, right? Uh, uh, but how to do this in large scale is a problem. Well, for this way, you, uh -huh. well, you can imagine that we, we, we can have a sort of uh, mm -hmm. oracle study mm -hmm. where you assume everything is grounded yeah. with one hundred percent. Yes. And based on that, you. Yeah. 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 Do you see significant Have you ever run such an experiment? No. No. Because I don't think we have the labels. I see. And this also, this needs to be manually labeled. Yeah. Just give you the model. Uh, yeah. 
around, around 10 years ago, people, uh, people, think people yeah. were working on uh, machine translation. Yeah. The grounding is like water alignment in machine translation. Yes, yes. So yes. Uh, we actually developed this uh, manual aligned yeah. compass. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Then the issue that using this manual alignment compass, we can build the yeah. uh, much better statistical yeah. machine translation yeah. system. Then afterwards, the water alignment itself became a yeah. task yeah. to <laughs> yes. the, the yeah. try to improve the accuracy of yeah. water alignment. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. So actually, like, uh, if in translation, I see some work basically trying to inject in this prior, because if you know the alignment of word, you're having some prior, right? They're trying to inject in the prior to the translation system, and I think they observe some improvement here. Yeah, but the, mm -hmm. the alignment is very useful in the old days when people are developing a static machine translation, but now people move to from <laughs> static machine translation to neural machine translation. Yeah. Where the attention part is sort yeah. of hybrid, hybrid, hybrid learning. Yeah. Like yeah. mm -hmm. So, a slightly different version of a similar question. So, um, let's ignore all tasks. I just don't care about any of them, right? Mm -hmm. Most of what we've been talking about is like, oh, this, if I have enough of these different tasks, then somehow I can show them all as this one model. So, therefore, it's the best model. Mm -hmm. But really, it's the best model because it's just seeing those tasks. So, let's forget all tasks for a second. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the question of language grounding. Okay. In the in the model, okay. how it, what it's doing right is you've introduced this specific um, cross-modal transformer cell. Mm -hmm. So where what's what do I what have I learned or what's my intuition about why that works? And then okay. also related to that, correct me if I'm wrong. In some of your relations in the paper, mm -hmm. um, in some of the stuff about the multiple layers, we actually see that you don't really need that many layers of cross-modality because That's true. mostly what we've done is we've turned the vision problem into a language problem, mm -hmm. and therefore we can do this attention. Yeah. So where where should I go from? Where, how can I borrow the intuition that you have about cross-modality, and then where can I go from there to sort of actually make progress on the sort of larger grounding problem mm -hmm. um, beyond kind of just how do I encode this task into the same vocabulary to run this model? I see. So uh, if I under correct understand correctly. Sorry, that's a huge building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to I want to abstract I want to abstract like what is the central part I I, I can yeah. answer. So are you are you like talking about why the model learn visual grounding? Right, or or more generally, right? If we're gonna, move, so you have you have this intuition to introduce this cross cross modal that's kind right. of transformer, right? Okay, that's true. and that's a, that's a great piece of intuition. Okay, but then what we found, right, mm -hmm. is that you there's really not that much actual grounding going on. It's mm -hmm. more that we have we only need a couple layers of it because mm -hmm. we basically moved our ROIs into vocabulary. So and, and by using the, the detections basically like words, uh -huh. yeah. we don't need that many layers. So if in your idealized version mm -hmm. of what grounding should look like. So, yeah, so the first thing, yeah, the first thing is like showing here. So actually, the gray one is six layer. On VQA, it's used a two layer. It's actually performed really bad. And but some other tasks like refer expression or VCR. So VCR, although like it looks like a hard task, but in our experiment, is like it's kind of overfitting a lot. It seems like pretty easy. So like two layer is already do a really good job here. So and and because. So the reason we, we, we are developing this variability is that we think different tasks may require different different level of like visual processing or visual abstraction layer. So so there's really not saying that okay, we, which two layers is can be done grounding. So that's my first uh, in terms of your first uh, question. And I think the second question here is that uh, so what we are trying to build on this paper is before before this paper. So there is actually no kind of pre-training. Or like, what is the motivation? Like, like kind of like for vision, language, vision domain, and language domain, we learn this kind of structure information by this pre-training on like some on some like ob objective. But, but basically, we are so like essentially what we are learning from vision language tasks is we want to learn this kind of association. So if we have a perfect visual representation, right? But as long as it's not tied with the caption word like table, it is not useful to solve this task. You you make like easily embedding in some space. But still, what we really want is to joint understanding these two things. So, 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 so basically, what we are trying to do is we are trying to explore this, uh, like, uh, and uh, explore these directions. And I think this is a, a little initial stage. So there may be some more work and how to maybe reduce, how, how to learn better groundings or some study on like whether it's learning grounding or not. So I, I think there will be later publications trying to answer this. Yeah. 
try to learn better groundings in the pre-training. Mm -hmm. uh, what you measure is still kind of the reconstruction uh, mm -hmm. um, kind of accuracy in the bird task. Uh, you are not exactly mirroring the ground. Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, I didn't include that, but we have a task. Basically, we have a zero shot uh, image retrieval. So basically, that if you train on conception caption and you do retrieval tasks, because you ha we have this kind of predicting a line or not, right? So you just use that as score, and you're predicting that uh, that, that one. Uh, uh, like basically, you uh, you are trying to do a retrieval task on Flickr 3K. We observe it can actually do a pretty good job. So basically, it learns even like training on conceptual captions. The domain is a little bit different uh, from Flickr 3K data set, but it can sh actually learn to correctly uh, like uh, retrieve the image. So so but but yeah, but we don't have any other uh, like. Uh, uh, about, about, uh, like, apart from that, we don't have any other to measure whether you do a good job or not. Yeah, uh, on pre training stage. And also this application, so mm -hmm. the number of layers is the cosmo dynamic kind of information no. fusion no. number of layers. No, no, it's, it's, it's like basically we fuse every layer. So if you have two layer visual, because we have like a K layer of the vision, a visual bird, we have L layer of the textual bird. Here the K is two, but L is always 12 because we want to use a pre trained bird rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on the birth side, you know, text side, you even do not really tune the parameter. Yeah. The parameter no, we, 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 we fine tune it. So we're trying okay. to fix the parameter. And actually, the intuition is uh, if you're fixing them because they are initialized from a very good pre training, uh, like large corpus, it may be if you just learn grounding, right? Uh, just addition part of grounding, it may be better. But in our case, uh, fixing them actually leading a worse experiment. But if you want to try to train a model solving vision language tasks and language tasks simultaneously, this is very useful because you are trying to separate those weight and building a connection between these two. You are having more weight, which can do each task uh, like uh, separately. Right. But the fundamental assumption that you're making, and I'm not saying that it's necessarily wrong, okay. is that you already have a semantic representation of the vision, yep. and you already have basically a semantic representation of the language. Yes. And so then once those exist, I can do this cross model transfer. Yep. Um, as a child, presumably, I was learning both of them simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Or was I not? Mm -hmm. Was it the case that I actually built an entire visual representation of the world first, and then I learned language? Basically, like, is this the right sort of philosophical way to be building grounding models, or is this the way that is the best for the tasks that we have right now? Um, yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it's right. This is uh, actually a problem. Right? Whether we want to some kind of new, like, absolutely new structure, that do this simultaneously. So in our case, we didn't really fine tune in the visual part. So if you fine tune this part, you can think, okay, you're trying to train everything end to end, right? But 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 basically, due to some like computation like limited, we are doing we didn't do this. And also, it's also considered based on the performance because because we are trying to using the best of the visual representations, best of the language part to building the because we are thinking if you want to understand vision language, you have to do. We have, we have to use the best of both of them. So, and that's why we are using existing system and trying to build on top of it and not really uh, having a very new com like novel uh, which didn't use any of them, yeah. And also for pre-training, did you, how about using other tasks? Uh, I think this kind of reconstruction task is directly kind of inspired by BERT. But yeah. for kind of Google Conceptual, that's naturally a caption data yeah. set, or it's a retrieval data set, why not directly just use that's that's a Google caption as task for the pre-training? Yeah, so it, it, it has this kind of like uh, image caption alignment, which, which, but, but yeah, but I think this is a very good point. We also uh, really explore this less due to timing stuff, but, but uh, I think now we are trying this series of uh, like uh, no, no, noise, uh, no, noise conjunctive estimation, so like NCE loss, mm -hmm. uh, which is proposed by VideoBird, and we try that, and it uh, seems like we have positive results. So basically, using that loss, it will benefit uh, downstream tasks more. Yeah. Uh, using that loss for retrieval tasks? No, no, for, for, like, uh, for the uh, visual. Basically, originally, we are trying to minimize the KL between the predictor, be, uh, original like soft label with their predict label, right? And now you can replace that uh, KL, the original loss, with uh, NCE loss. And using that loss, basically, you are, you are trying to re like retrieve among these sample the negative regions, uh, and you are trying to align them. This is actually a better loss in, uh, for pre-training tasks. Uh, I think uh, in our, uh, so we are actually doing a current work uh, yeah, for that, and I can introduce a little bit later, yeah. So yeah, so then like I'm going to talk about the uh, recent and future work. 
And one of the work I'm like I'm the ongoing work I'm doing now is the vision language multitask learning. So so basically, uh, so for example, if we see the view bird, it's still like there like there might be still some inconsistency grounding by task specific fine tuning. And also we only involve four vision language tasks. And also the model is huge. We also observe there's overfitting on some specific, specific tasks for for example VCR. And what we, we what we want is we want more tasks. And we want consistent grounding. So basically, we want to train them, train them together to use the same representations. And we want to explore the limit of the model. So basically, we want to say how many tasks we can do for a single model here. So then, like we are trying to do this, like one model for all vision language tasks. So and now we are trying these twelve tasks here. So basically, we have this VQA, refer expression task, and vision language verification task, which is done by other similar work and image description task. So basically the difference here is that we're trying to train this task, do a multi-pass learning, so train this task together. And what, what we are re really interested in is these three things. The first is we are interested in benchmarking all vision language tasks, understanding tasks in VUBERT. And we are, we are interested in studying this interconnection with, like within task group or between task group, right? So if you join training them, what's happening or what is the best strategy? And we're also interested in this, like, explainable AI. So basically, we can, whether we can use other tasks to output, to output some, or to provide some explanations for the, for the task. So for example, like, uh, if the VQA doing this wrong, what about the, is the refer expression pointing to the right region? So we are interested in, like, to some analysis on that, which may can give us more understanding of the model. Cool. And there's another project, ongoing project, uh, I'm, uh, and I'm leading. So basically, it's called Dialog without Dialog. So the goal here is that we have uh, two agents, and the two agents, so one agent only sees a pool of image, basically only sees a four image, so the green one, and one agent, the red one, sees only the target image, for example, in this case, it's a, a region, like the third image. So what, what, what we are interested in is that uh, to have a conversation between these two, two agents and letting the agent to predict, letting the, like the, 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 uh, the question agent to predicting uh, actually the goal here. So basically something like, the agent will ask, is there a child in your sitting? And the agent is answer laying. And then it may be predicting four. And then like, uh, if you're asking a, a dialogue question, something like, what is the color of the blanket? And it's answer red. So then it can correctly predict it. The, the correct one is three. It's to yeah, it's, it's very similar. So, but, uh, but what people do here is people usually collecting, like we, we have human annotators and collecting this data, right? And then like we are trying to train the agent with this data, right? So this is what common approach. Basically, you are collecting data for this goal-oriented dialogue. So for this goal. And, yeah. and in our case, we are more interested in we are not want to collecting data. Because collecting data is expensive. So can we just use reward to happening, like to, to learn this kind of dialogue? But but usually like uh, by only injecting this reward, because the reward is very sparse. What we, all re what we see is that uh, it will say something like what color is this, this, this. So basically, it will bias from the language. So our goal here is whether we can learn both maintain the language fluency and also, also improve the task performance, like the, goal, like the specific goal performance here. So what we do is we want to learn the language fluency from VQA. So basically, we want to train a question bot to ask questions using VQA data. There's no history. Or there's no dialogue context here. And the key insight uh, is that we want to use a language model with discrete like, Latin action space. And if we see these two questions, and then like, if we interpolate in this discrete Latin action space, what we observe is it can actually have these nice properties that it has these nice transitions between different questions. Right? So because like, something like uh, it can actually, it didn't really fall in to generate like, a weird, weird question or like, a non-human question. And then the second key insight is for tasks, for like improving the task performance while fine tuning, uh, we want to do like without forgetting the language, and we are reinforce the discrete Latin action space instead of uh, you are having the reward on the speaker here. So basically, we are directly manipulating the action the Latin action space here. And by doing this, we have some initial result. So with the agent, uh, so with the agent training on VQA. So it's using a VQA, and we're actually using this AWA data. So this, this is animal in the well. So basically, this is a different domain of VQA image. But given these two, two image, the question, the question bot only sees two image, and the answer, and the answer bot sees this uh, target image. 
So, the, so this is actually result we are seeing. So the question box is how many paths are in the photo? And the answer is one. Because the answer box is not accurate, right? You can make, essentially it will do worse on the counting problem. And it actually gives you a wrong answer. So the question box is then predicting one. So let's suppose, oh, let's suppose the, the target is zero and the, it's actually supporting the, 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 the one. And then it's going to ask another question, like what color is under, like is underbelly beneath animal? And it's going to answer like a brown. So it's, it keep giving the wrong answer now. And it's still predicting the one here. And then like it's asking what color is the zebra's fur? So there is actually a mistake here, but I think the goal here is the question agent is want to ask the fur. We can kind of understand it's asking the fur of this animal. And uh, it actually answers black and white. And then it's actually doing this job correctly. So the goal here is that we are using VQ data and we are trying to do this goal-oriented dialogue really by only task-specific tuning without any of the human collected data set, data. So are you generating the, are yeah. you, are you, so basically are you generating questions yeah. as well as answers? Uh, I'm generating answers, I'm generating questions and I'm fine-tuning on this goal. I, I'm fine-tuning question bot on this goal. So you are not using the, you don't have any A-bot? Uh, A-bot, A-bot is a VQ. This is a VQA system. It's a fixed VQA system. It's not fine tuned. So you freeze it. Yeah, I freeze it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in terms of the future interest, I'm interested in this multi model representation learning in vision, language, sound, and action, basically different domain. Uh, the reason is because the environment around us is not unimodal, right? So, for example, give us this table concept, we can say is this kind of visual, visual, visual representation, visual appearances. It can be something like if you knock the table and if you have some sound here. And also, you can provide some kind of high level, uh, high level like uh, the table is providing a level of surface which object may have placed. So what we really want is uh, learn a representation that can connect all these modalities, and then it will give us a more complete understanding of the environment. So I'm also interested in this emerging of goal-oriented dialogue with natural language. And dialogue is the most natural way to communicate, right? And, but it is really impossible to collect their dialogue data for all the dialogue tasks, right? If you want to collect, well, if you want to build a Go, Go, Go dialogue system, it is really impossible to collect data for all the goals. So what I'm really interested in is that we are want to study this kind of emerging of language, or like, oh yeah, so we have some work in this emerging of language and emerging of machine code, but this is not useful because people cannot understand it, right? <laughs> Those code, although machine, although this code may be compositional, compositional but it's not useful. So people cannot understand them. And what I'm really interested in is, I'm interested in emerging of strategy, so that I'm interested in this emerging of language that human can understand. So we want to constrain the code in the space of human, that language, in the language space. And also I'm interested in this common sense abstraction and causal reasoning. So, because I think this is an in intrinsic motivation behind the scene. And and also this <coughs> emerging of the common sense and reasoning of the, uh, of the motivation here is really something we should abstract uh, behind the actual the world around us. And then like we can build a more human-like uh, or more interpretable agent which can help people in the daily life. So, so this is something I'm really underexplored uh, in my study, in my PhD study, but this is my interest in the future. Cool, thank you. I have a question. You talk about kind of so many uh, future interests. Mm -hmm. uh, from my kind of my understanding, uh, in your main talk, you don't talk about grounding. Uh -huh. and then you talk about future. You are interested in internal or, or models. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, there's another trend like modular network, modular models. Mm -hmm. Want to kind of give different modules and yep. uh, then in this way, you can also achieve some kind of explainability. Yeah. Uh, I think behind or uh, you also talk about reasoning. Yes. Well, for all these four kind of names, they are, as you said, I think they are referring to the same thing. Yeah. But they, now they have very different tasks there, yeah. very different data sets. Yeah. If you just want to choose one task, uh -huh. one data on maybe just one task, uh -huh. which task do you think that will kind of really solve the yeah. underlying problem <coughs> there? And what do you think is the underlying problem? How do you under, kind of measure the progress of that essential underlying problem? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's a really good point uh, because I think all all these different approaches basically we are trying to approach the same goal, right? We are trying to solve the same goal here. So we have this kind of huge 
pre-training, like using a huge, build a huge model and uh, using uh, like tons of data to pre-train the model. We also have this like more interpretable one where you have like something like modular network, right? And 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 I think for me, <coughs> so actually I'm interested in both, but uh, but I think they, they have different properties, right? Because uh, so the so way of the modular network is that now it can still handle in a very limited data, right? So it can still like and toy data, something like, uh, right? So so it cannot really handle the real world problem, and and actually we want to solve the real world problem, and also and this is a way of benchmarking, uh, like whether we are succeed or not, right? So we want to make progress on real world problem, but we want to still benefit from those kind of instinct uh, from this like modular network or those kind of toy problem. So maybe we can, if we can combine these two ideas, I think that will be better. But, but I mean, what I mean saying is that really this is different properties or different merit for both systems. Yeah. I have a question. Are we having applications all of, all of this? Mm -hmm. uh, so what would be the application that you would envision uh, as being an important application of this work? Something that, you know, not mm -hmm. just vision researchers and language researchers would yeah. yeah. be playing with, but that somebody would actually want to pay for. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think especially for vision language tasks, uh, and now like there's not really a lot of applications, right? For something like uh, image captioning, may be useful for visual impaired people, but still a very constrained domain, right? Because we are the system is not perfect, right? Sometimes pr produce bizarre captions, but I think a, a long term goal here is that uh, we want to sum them as test bed, right? Basically testing whether the system is intelligent or not, and also. I'm super like I'm super interested in this dialogue system. So basically, because the dialogue system I think is the next thing which we can making on production. Uh, so I'm interested in how to how to like, really learn this Gorenti dialogue without with, with like, really less supervision. And in like in, in my talk, I'm talking about this visual dialogue, this this kind of gay like image guessing game, gay a uh, guess what game uh, kind of uh, goal. But this goal can be applied to any any other goal like. Uh, any other maybe that pure language based dialogue so 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 yeah so what I mean here is that this is this is kind of research problem we study but uh, but this may be constrained here but we can use a similar idea strategy applying on any other uh, real problem we are facing yeah. Jason, in the goal driven dialogue that you said so your goal is not to guess which image uh, it, it's, it's it, guess. your goal is uh -huh. it, is your goal to Regress over a feature vector? No, no. The goal here is to guess the image because the uh, question box is a pool of image, right? This image has a label of the image, which image it is it? Yeah, yeah. So basically, you are going to predict. If the pool is four, you are going to predict one, two, three, four at the end, and then you are going to get the loss or reward. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, then let's move on to Justin again. Very interesting. Thank you.